Quilting is a way of meshing fibres together to create your own fabrics or to create embellishments for existing fabrics. Uh, like for instance with this little bag, this has been made with um, different types of ribbons and that's been meshed onto felt to create something that's unique, brand new. This is a little bag, I'm going to show you how I made this in just a second, but this is just using pieces of felt cut into shapes and then put back together again a bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle. Um, this is a piece of fabric that I started making just using yarn. Now when this is meshed together or felted together, just onto calico on the back, it becomes permanent and it doesn't fray. So then you can use it as fabric to make things like this tissue box holder that I made. But there's lots of different types of fabrics that you can use. This is um, a wool skirt that I just used some yarns swirled them into circles and popped those around the hemline. When I'd actually finished it, I turned it over the other way and thought, you know, I like that side better. So do take a look at both sides of your fabric because you may prefer the reverse side. It tends to be a little bit fuzzier than the front side. This is a showcase, if you like, of lots of different types of fabric. Ribbon behaves in a very different way. It scrunches up and if it's a satin ribbon, then the sheen's taken off it. Um, but using different yarns and roving wools, and then this is really simple, it's, um, it's a little fleecy hoodie that I made and on the back of it I cut out the shape of a train and I've used yarn or wool for the, um, the tracks and the smoke and then on the front I've done the same but this time with a little car. So just cut out the shapes, put them together, put them under the felting machine and it's blended them together. And again if I just show you on the inside you can start to see how those fibres mesh together because basically you're going to tear the, the fibres and the front comes through to the back. That's what makes it permanent. This is the machine that I use. It's a simplicity felting machine. It's got 12 needles and although initially it looks a little bit like a sewing machine, it's nothing like a sewing machine. There's no thread. Those 12 needles don't have eyes, they have bobs and that means they've got tiny little grooves that have been cut into them all the way down the shank. So just be warned, they're very very sharp at the point, they are very very sharp all the way down the shank. And when you put your foot on the foot, they bounce up and down at a rate of knots and this is what literally tears the fabrics together or meshes them together. So this is how I started making the little bag and this came about quite by accident because I bought what I thought were some very affordable sheets of felt when I got them home. They were very affordable because they were just in the charm pack small pieces like this so I wasn't sure what to do with them. So I literally chopped them into pieces just at angles and then joined them back together again. Now I find with felting, felt or wool fabrics work best. You can use cottons, you can use heavier fabrics. In fact, the worst thing you're going to do is break a needle. You've still got another 11 you can work with. This is how it works. So there's no feed dogs underneath the, tea, uh, um, the needle, sorry. You have to move it around. It's a little bit like free motion embroidery. The more you move, the more the fibres mesh. Now you can see them coming through and meeting each other. You can do too much though. You can over felt and then you'll have a hole. But on something like this, all you're going to do is patch it over. Just carry on and do a few more. they're starting to come together. Now the bag that I made, um, as you can see, it's a little bit fuzzier. When I'd actually made up all of the fabric, I turned it over and I liked the back side better. Again, you can see how it looks almost blurred at the edges. So if you wanted a really striking, contemporary kind of look, then stick to the right side, turn it over, then you'll find something a little bit different. And that's what it looked like on the back side. 
Now I shan't make all of that because that's going to take rather a long time but you get the idea. I would simply made up the sheet until it was large enough and what I actually did on the bag as well was to keep the edge. So it is lined, again I'll take you through that later on, uh, with felt so I don't have to turn this inside out but I like this jagged edge, I think it gives it a really modern look to the bag. But I've got another idea for you which you may find a little bit easier. With this piece of fabric I've joined all the pieces together first and then I've put a fusible interfacing on the back. It's just a lightweight interfacing. So basically all of the pieces have been held together before I started felting. So I'm not going to use the back side of this. I'm going to use the brighter side on the front. Now if you don't have a felting machine, you could use this technique, stick all your pieces down, iron them on, and then take your embroidery machine and do some free motion embroidery over the top to hold all of the sections in place. We might do that anyway. Let's see how it looks. Because at the moment... Although there's lots of colours in all of these boxes, I think it's looking a little bit plain, so I want to add something extra to it. And this is where my bowl of yarn comes into effect. I've got quite a lot of this. And it's scraps and bits and bobs of ribbon. And this is roving yarn. So this is yarn that you'll use with your felting machine and you tear it. So it's not like a yarn that you can knit. You literally tear that and it's available in lots and lots of different colours. This is doll's hair. It could be just wool yarn. Now I've got a bit of sparkle as well, and we'll put some sparkle on there, but this is plastic, so it's not going to felt. But I do have a tip to show you how we can do that. So I'm going to embellish over the top of my already felted piece of fabric with some matching scraps. I'm just going to open these out a little bit and lay them onto my fabric and then build it up. I don't want them to be so solid that I can't see the colours of the felt fabric. I just want to make it a little bit softer and I think that's what this yarn's going to help me achieve. So let's see how we go. to work. I need to go over that a little more to actually make sure that those pieces are felted but it looks like somebody's splattered it with paint now. But I just wanted to give you another couple of tips. I mentioned about putting a bit of sparkle on here. So lay that on the top and as I said this isn't going to felt because it's made from plastic. So the way that you're going to trap that and make it felt is by putting a little bit of roving yarn, I'll go for a new one. I have an orange in here. Lay this out very finely on top of the plastic, on top of the sparkly bits. This is the same for like a, a Lurex yarn that may have plastic in it as well. So lay that over the top of the sparkle and then when you felt it, it traps it under the If I decide I don't like that, I haven't really overly felted it, so this will peel off. So if you change your mind, change your mind quickly, because the longer you do felt, the more permanent that's going to be. But it's not the end of the world, you can simply peel that off at this point, And that goes for any of the different fabrics that you're going to be putting on there. One more quick tip, and then I'll get on with finishing this. If you've got a lot of layers of yarns, of threads, maybe of, of ribbons. The machine does have 
um, a presser foot lifter, which means that you can take the foot up and down slightly. It's also going to adjust on the top so you can unscrew that and lift the presser foot up even more. But even so, if you've got lots of fine threads, you may find that when you push them underneath the, the foot, the foot actually pushes them out of the way. So this is how we deal with it. You take a roll of cling film, cling film's plastic, and remember what I was saying about plastic not felting. Lay this over the top of those yarns, then push it underneath the foot, and then felt. Cling film will tear, but you can simply take that away when you've finished, and that keeps all of your fibres in place while you're felting. So that's just another little tip. I don't want all of those on my bag though. I'm going to carry on with my orange roving yarn and a little bit of sparkle, and I'll come back to you when I've finished. Now before I move on to making the bag and sewing it together, I just wanted to talk quickly about care and maintenance for your machine. You can work with less than 12 needles on this machine particularly, so if you break one, you can take out the stump and then carry on with 11, 10, 9, 8, or if you wanted to do some very fine work, you can actually work with just one needle if you're making eyes on little characters and things like that. Before you change the needles, always switch the machine off and unplug it because when you open up the section here, these needles are exposed and they are very, very sharp. So to change the needles, every one of those has got a little um, key in the top, a screw in the top, a grub screw. You will have in your set two Allen keys, a big one and a little one. Now the little one is for the grub screws. So you can replace every needle individually. You'll have a pair of tweezers so you don't have to touch those as well. Because remember they're sharp all the way down the sides. And the larger Allen key is to take off all of this housing. So if you've got a needle in the centre or around the back that you've broken and you can't reach it easily, then you can take the whole lot out. Keep this nice and clean. You will find that lint builds up inside the machine because you're tearing fabric with it basically. Always put the guard back on again. That makes it practically impossible to get your fingers underneath there, so it makes it a safer unit to use. And every now and again, there are two drawers underneath here. I like to keep my needles and allen keys in the one side. In this side, you'll start to see lint building up. That's purely from the piece of fabric that I've just been making, because this is a brand new machine. Save that, because you can always use it and refelt it. OK, I'll get the sewing machine out in just a second. But the next stage with my bag, is to put the lining on. I'm making this a little bit differently to regular bags. Because I'm using felt, I want it to be solid because of course felt not being um, woven or knitted, it's, it can pull and it can tear very, very easily. So I want a couple of layers. Um, so I'm going to put my piece of fabric, now I've got it to the right size. So some spray adhesive onto the back of it. This is a temporary spray adhesive and this has been designed for fabric because I don't want it to gunk up my sewing machine. So don't use any old glue on your fabrics. And I'm going to stick that down. Now I've got the, the felt at the back, all of these layers of felt on the top and the roving yarn and the backing fabric. That should make it substantial enough to not to move. If you want to put a woven backing on that, you can do, but do be warned it's going to fray because I'm not going to hem this one. So the next thing to do is to cut out the shape. I like the, the random shape, I like the uneven edges, and I'm going to use them. You can always trim them down afterwards if you feel that it doesn't look quite right. But basically I'm going to cut around the side section, trimming away any of that stabiliser that's sticking out because you're going to see the edge of the bag now, so I'll just cut that back, make it nice and neat. So I'll trim all the way around and then we'll come back and start to sew the bag together. 
right, so that's where I am at the moment. Um, I know I can still see a little bit of the white behind there, but I'll, I'll trim that away after I've finished. And I've cut out the back of the felt to the same size and the shape as the front section. I did mention free motion embroidery, and I can't resist it with this because I just think when you've got all of those colours and then the roving yarn or the wool tops and the sparkle, you can throw anything at this bag and it just adds a little bit more glam. So I've put my darning foot on the machine already and I'm just going to squiggle in random directions. Um, away we go. So I'm not going to follow any particular pattern. I don't think there's any right or wrong as far as free motion embroidery is concerned. But this will also help to hold the felt on the back to the bag of the front as well. I could go around in circles, I could use zigzags, I could go through some heart shapes or flowers. Because I'm using the same colour thread, to be honest, you don't see an awful lot of it. Unless it's on the pale colours. So I'll finish going all over this and then we'll come back and start to sew the sides of the bag together. Okay, so I've finished doing my um, stippling, if you like. Scribble, really. And that's how we're looking. Looks good on the inside as well, actually, because that's going to be the lining in effect when I make up the bag. So the next thing I'm going to do is put my regular foot back onto my sewing machine and sew all the way around the edges. So what I need to do is take my screwdriver to take off the free motion foot and I must remember to lift up the feed dogs as well. I tend to forget about that occasionally. So this one comes off. The screw comes out and I'll clip my regular foot back on again. Oops. Okay, the heavy breathing isn't me. That's Alfie, it's just coming out of the sunshine. Um, while I'm just making this look really difficult, um, I've got a magnetic clasp that I'm going to put on the bag as well. Normally the magnetic clasp would go on inside the lining, but of course the lining of this bag is stuck to the outside, so on this occasion the clasp is going to go all the way through. So I'll just lift those feed dogs back up again. On most machines you'll have to go down and up once with a needle to actually bring those back up again. Just uh, grab my thread. And I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way around the edge, around about a quarter of an inch in. There we go. So I've sewn all the way around. That'll hold all of the layers together. So if any of the, the felt has kind of grown, or if you want to trim back any of the white that's sticking out from underneath, now's the time to do that. Because sometimes it does move while you're sewing, that's fine. There's no set pattern with this bag. And there, you'll make a much tidier job when you have more time at home. Trim this one off. You could, of course, if you wanted to, um, hand sew all round if you wanted to spend some time doing a, a blanket stitch with some embroidery thread would look nice. You don't need to, to stop felt from fraying because that's one of the beauties of working with felt, is that it, it doesn't fray. So it's easy. And these kind of designs I think are quite forgiving. You're not going to look at that and think, oh, there's a stitch that went wrong there. But you'd never really know. Okay, now I'm going to arrange the bag, if you like. So again, no set measurements, however, it, it looks good. I'll just trim the excess thread back here. You will see, of course, the lining on this bag, so 
make sure that your uh, your loose ends are tidy. One more, that's going to irritate me. There. So you need to fold over into around about thirds. So I've got that choice, or I could use that as the bottom of the bag and have that as the top. I like it the other way around. So fold over into around about thirds. Now my edges aren't necessarily straight, so I need to sew the sides of the bag slightly in from there. When you start to sew, over sew a few times at the top here because that's going to be the weakest point. So backwards and forwards two or three times should make that a strong seam. And then just the same at the bottom so that doesn't come undone. You could measure that and draw a straight line if you were a bit more confident doing that. And then do the same on the other side. I think one more. Just to make that bond really strong. Done with you. Okay, that's how we are. Um, now I'm going to pop the magnetic clasp, and in fact I'm going to trim that down a little bit at the side there. Not as far as the stitches that I've just made, but I think that'll just make that edge a little bit neater. And there. Uh, I think that's better. And that loose stitch on there. Okay, so now finally I'm going to put the magnetic clasp on because I, I wasn't sure until this stage exactly where it needs to be. So, they come like this if you've not seen them before. You've got one side with a little post on it and the other side has a groove on it. And they all stick together. Where's the post? There we go. Whoops, so it's like a, an innie and an outie, if you like. And on the back of each one of these is a washer. So I'll need to mark where these two prongs on the back of each side go, and the washer goes on the back. So that was the innie, that's the outie. And it's somewhere in the middle, because this bag is so abstract, it doesn't matter exactly, but around about here would be good. So I'm just going to put a dot for the moment, and then to mark exactly where the holes are going to go, take the bracket off the back, pop it over the dot, and mark two, two lines down the holes at the side. Okay. Then you'll take a sharp pair of scissors or your quick unpick and make a hole. Now it's not the end of the world if the hole's too big because you can always sew over by hand if you make a mistake. And I'm going to put the, the bit that sticks out on the flap of my bag. When you turn it over to the other side, take the washer and bend the two prongs outwards. You may need some pliers to do that if your fingers aren't very good. Okay. Um, this washer just happens to be red. They're not usually, but that's quite lucky, really. Um, now on the other side, I'm going to pop the magnet on, line it up, and make my dot underneath. I'm going to take that one off. And then the same again with the washer. Pop that over the top, make two marks. These marks don't stand out a lot for you to see, but I can see those okay. Make two holes. Push 
push that through. There we go. Washer goes on. And again, bend those outwards. Right. There are two things I'm not too happy with. One of them is the fact that I can see the back of that on the, on the front of my bag. And the other one is that I can see the inside here. Um, I could take a, a piece of brown felt, I'll do that in just a second, cut out a circle and glue that over the top. And on the top of the bag, I'm going to sew a button. I'm not going to sew the button onto the bag because that's going to be quite difficult because I've already got the clasp there. But I want it to look as though I've sewn the button on and then I'll glue it. So I'm going to take my thread and this is quite a thick embroidery thread and just sew around the button a couple of times to make it look as though it's been sewn on. So I'll tie that in a knot at the back. There we go, and then I'm going to take my glue gun and uh, where should we put that? On the on here. You could use a strong fabric glue if you don't have a glue gun. And that's going to stick straight on top of there. And then leave that to dry. It won't take very long to dry with it being a glue gun. And then I think just to finish off, I will cover over that on the inside. But when I've cut away my loose threads, I think you've got a really striking, unusual unique bag and to be honest even if you've tried to make one of these exactly the same it would be very difficult this one's way overdressed remember the bag that i showed you right at the beginning of this video i hadn't got all of the sparkle and the free motion embroidery so it's it's still um, rather loud and an attention grabbing bag but uh, not quite so much so as my uh, my sparkly evening bag so i hope you like it hope you enjoy the party <laughs>